Good morning. Monday morning. It's going to clear up. We hope it's going to clear up anyway. But uh, start on all. I wasn't starting all week yesterday. Was that? That's what's not church. Church is what we can say. Follow by the way, say. Found the points are all out the window now. Yeah, I thought I'd make a. Yeah, I've been working on two or three. Uh, why you see them? It's quite nice. So a bit of hazel, a bit of hawthorn cleaned off and sort out. A wee bit to go on that one. And uh, another one here. The hazel and uh, laurel. Laurel handle on it. That's this thing. So I've been shooting around a bit of chestnut there and all. Getting there bit by bit. I'm busy watching. The reason I'm making it is because um, at least I've got something to say. I've always got something to say about this one. I'm kind of slightly annoyed about it in some ways, like you know. Anyway, something fell out of me, you know. Uh, it's probably what's left of the brain. Uh -huh. Anyway, cut a long story short, but I've been watching, uh, I probably mentioned it in one of the other videos, I've been watching uh, on YouTube, Acorn to Arabella. And uh, another one actually, Tally Ho, refurbing and a new build, the Acorn the Arabella, it's a new build and bolt build, really interesting stuff. The Tally Ho ones, he is a bolt builder sailor and everything, the Acorn the Arabella ones, these are two lads that sound with one of them got a lot of joinery skills and one of them, but it's been very good, to cut a long story short, it's been very good. And uh, I've watched it, and uh, but it's also became extremely popular. And uh, now we've watched them all. There is no more at this moment in time. It's been stopped, or they have stopped, or we're not getting any more at this moment. Because over the past while on YouTube, you've probably noticed it. And so anything that's become, suddenly become popular and a lot of people watching, um, they're looking for patrons. Uh, and this is the latest thing, which basically people who enjoy the videos will, can go on and become a patron of, of that particular thing and uh, contribute so much money a year. Uh, be it whatever you want to be. I've not really looked into it, I've seen it. On a few things which I won't do, I'm not interested that way. I'm not going to be other people to <laughs> continue to do what they enjoy doing. If they want to do it, that's fair enough. I'm not going to pay for it. Oh, no, no. <laughs> but uh, yes, uh, on the, the tally hole one, actually, uh, on the end of the videos, each video he was making, he was putting up, he started away putting a list of the patrons on. But at the end, it had to stop because there was that many. And so. If you look at that, and uh, these the viewing figures on these things are quite, you know, good. People are enjoying it. People are enjoying watching this kind of stuff. Uh, and it starts away in, in, in an all innocent thing. It's, 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 and then before long, the money people start to look at it. And uh, they start to look at it with a view to money. Um, and the particular example of that kind of genre is the MV Seeker thing. Which is great too. Marvellous. But I caught a little one this morning, uh, and this, this is brilliant, this is a whole load of guys here who are, basically it's, it's like watching a, it's like I'm watching a porn movie in some ways, like, because of, we've got that much money flowing into this thing now that they're able to buy the this, that, and whatever it be, and uh, you were getting, on the other one videos, you were getting people contributing stuff, and were, stuff, and they were visiting the the builds and various things and it was good and it was interesting because it was all people who had a similar interest and that kind of thing but uh, the one I watched this morning was uh, they were busy uh, now it's a case of they're over engineering everything to, to make the videos go on and on and on and complicating things to the point where it's absolutely unreal and uh, it's, it's interesting to watch but not really because it's become more professional in a way and uh, there's obviously as I say there's money in this so you know it's become more professional 
on bad day, like it well, extremely well paid, or looked after for doing something you thoroughly enjoy. And fair do so, though, if they can do that, that's great. But at the expense of, well, I don't really know. Certainly not my expense. I'm not doing it. Uh, but uh, I noticed with the MV Seeker thing, uh, the various projects, but they've got this big junk uh, kind of thing they're building. I take it back. I've not really looked into that one a lot, but this one this morning was just full of grinding, buffing, welding. Uh, engineering this and that and various things and whatnot, and it was so well edited that uh, <laughs> it was just yeah. What do you say? If you like that kind of stuff, yeah, we're feeding the beast. Uh, but uh, the objector, yeah, I do in some ways. I object to what the whole principle of of people making film, making videos, and, and enjoying the bits and pieces they do, and not really. You know, just doing it for the pleasure. Um, but it's, it's. I, I can see it moving on in a completely different direction now, and so. And uh, I'm not watching the bloody television. People have got to watch something. Got to look at something. But anyway, enough said about it. Uh, it's not that uh, I don't enjoy. I do enjoy watching all these things, but I can see where it's moving, and uh, I'm kind of say I'm fussed on it. But anyway. But there also there's another little one which I'll, I'll mention. And uh, it's Tales from a Shipwright, and uh, very good, very, very good. Also very dangerous, extremely dangerous. The guy has been involved in power tools and wood build, bolt building all his days. And he has a flippancy about altering, which is, and the, the, what he says is perfectly true when you buying these machines out the box, in particular planers seem to be his, his marvellous thing, he's, he's obviously he writes readjusting the whole business of planers and he's right with a lot of things he says about the planers, but uh, he's got to remember that for the majority of people, these they can't do this, they shouldn't do it, and shouldn't take off safety features, shouldn't do this, shouldn't do that, shouldn't do anything like it. Him has been doing it well. If you personally you want to take the risk and you've got experience in in this kind of thing, that's fine. But I'm taken back to when I was a young lad myself, and I'm not. Probably, if a machine doesn't work right and you want to alter it all the time and you know what you're doing and it works for you, then as an individual you can do that. But he's also got a young apprentice working with him now, and his technique about saws. Planers, or they call them joiners over there, it's horrendous. Absolutely horrendous. <laughs> you really, <laughs> you wouldn't do this. He can do it. He's worked them all his days, but he can do it and, and he knows what he's doing. But it's the unknown factor that you've got to drive into it. Because I'll tell you a story of when I was a young lad, a young apprentice myself. And I went to work in the machine shop I had at the time. And, uh, one of the chaps who is a kind of main character in there uh, was a chap called Charlie Driver. And I went to work with Charlie, who, proud boast, when he was in his early 60s at that time, was that he had worked these machines all his days and never had an accident. Not a cut, not nothing. Fair dues. Safe man to work with. We were working the spinal mould of this day, we were setting up and we were doing a lot of window material. And he was, obviously, he had a certain amount of call cut out. I was a very young lad at the time and uh, we were doing a, I can't even mind what part of the process we were at, but he had ready stripped down the machine to weave the thing, we'd re guide it all and put it back up for the next process, change cutters and various other things. And he discovered that there was two pieces that he had been using as trials that he hadn't put through the machine. And I always remember that day. Oh, God, bloody frightening business this was. And rather than set up all the protection again on the machine, he decided that he would do it freehand. I didn't know any better or not on the thing we'd like. And I was just, I didn't know that at the time. It's only looking back at the thing. To... I was kept out of the road in the machine, you were a young lad, you think with that, with that was at that point in time. Anyway, besides that he was doing, it must have been something to do with uh, the drunk saws at the time, putting 
brain checks or something into the cell work or various things like that because it was enough to take his finger off in a winner, and which it did. <laughs> oh, I went, Jesus oh, Christ, these shouts. And there's blood flying every bloody where. And he's cut that bloody finger off there, right there, right in the bloody. And he's got the horn hopped out of the top of it and there's blood flicking. Oh, look for my finger, look for my finger, he said to me. I'll need to go to the office and get this sorted. <laughs> Needless to say, I did look for his finger. I don't think it was terribly hard, man. I wasn't. Really, I don't really think I was wanting to find his finger. Anyway, I didn't find it. I, well, I think I did look for it, but oh, gee, the shock of it all was horrendous. Like you know, I've never seen anything like this in my life before. Now this was a man who had worked machines all his days. Suddenly missing a finger, just like that. Yeah. And. Uh, I had to go to the office after it, to which they were busy trying to stifle the blood and, and uh, bandage his arm up and up, up close to his heart. That was the thing you get up above the heart. It's it's easier to stop the blood pumping, so thing would like you know. And I was I was getting more in the morning, getting a race to the hospital. To to thing it was like it was just along the road, and. Uh, I have to say to him, oh, I have to find your finger, Charlie, that was it, like, you know, right? Uh, but, so it just shows you, even though you're, you've are you been working these things and you've taken your mind off things, and in particular with a young lad, you don't really want to show them bad habits. You want to get them into good habits, especially when they're working with these things. These things are difficult. Because about six months later, by the way, I was working with somebody else in the machine shop on a surface surfacer, 12 inch surfacer, when, and I was, I hadn't been given the instruction I needed, and I was close to the cutter block, keeping it where it should have been, and I took an 18 inch off the top of my thumb, and didn't feel it, didn't feel it at all, didn't even notice it until I, the blood, first thing I noticed was the blood, and I went, oh, there's that blood coming for Frank, Frank. Frank shouldn't be more. <laughs> shouldn't be looking after me. He's supposed to be looking after me, but I don't know. So, oh God, I don't know. I looked at my thumb and I went, oh gee, where's the mate? An 18 inch right off the bloody top of it. <laughs> Hospital would be the way we go. Eight weeks later, I'm back at work. I'd never seen the machine look as good. It was all sorted out and uh, everything was in place and whatnot. And it was made out that you were somewhere, you were at flight. You, you weren't clued up on that as a young lad. You didn't know how things work, so you just really just played it by ear, but I'm aware of these videos and I'm aware of men being able to change things and do things and work things and be close to machinery, I've done it myself, but I don't think it's a good thing to teach young people when they're starting away, I think you must keep them safe, these, these tools can do some amount of damage, real damage to you, um, and it's kind of irresponsible to be putting this out on videos in some ways because people will maybe copy and oh he's doing that it should be all right i'll do that well no you really can't do that <laughs> you've not had a life oops, you've not had a life day working these bloody tools you can't do these things like you shouldn't do these things so that's where i find it difficult uh, and uh, but uh, so I've had my I've had times I've had my wee rant about it, like you know, I, I was determined to make something that was going to say, well, look, you know, there's, there's a, it's all well and good and well, it's health and safety, and, and I'm a great fan of it all, and there is too much of it at times, but when you're dealing with young people and amongst moving machines like this stuff, no, it should be top priority. Look after them, show them the right way. If they decide to change it someday themselves, well, that's fine, but look after them. Anyway, enough said. Enjoy the day. I hope you're away. I'll catch you later. Cheers.